Good afternoon, my viewers. You're welcome to my channel once again. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has moved me today to talk about a very, very key issue, a very sensitive issue in our environment today, in our society today, and that is the issue of sexual pervertness. Yes, let's start by talking about sex. Sex in a Christian home, the Bible tells us that sex is designed by God to be, enjoy, to be enjoyed within the confinement of marriage between a man and a woman in holy matrimony that is concealed by God. Which means, and the, the, the primary reasons of marriage are for procreation, and for the fleshly enjoyment, that's the kind of enjoyment God gave us on earth here for our pleasure, for, we, for us to enjoy pleasures of life like food, sex, and marriage. Not two confused lovers that are planning or deceiving themselves that they want to get married. You have to be confined under the house of God and confirmed as husband and wife before you can have sex for procreation and enjoyment. And anything that goes beyond sexual enjoyment in the conventional way and it goes beyond the conventional way for you to start imagining things that are out of this world, you are on your own. You are going against what uh, God created sex for. You see people talking about anal sex. What would, it, what would you have thought of for you to start thinking of going to the anus? You see people talking about oral sex. Let me ask you a question. Is it the same tongue that God said that there is power in the tongue? The same tongue you used to prophesy. The same tongue you are supposed to use to cast out demons. The same tongue you are supposed to command your day. Command things of heaven to work for you. The same tongue you are supposed to use to commune with your father in heaven. Is it that same tongue you want to stick in God forsaken places? Places where I meant for excretion. Places where I meant to take out for reproduction. The, the private parts of a man and a woman are the portal through which humans are brought to this earth. Especially the woman's body. She is the portal through which babies come to the world. So she is the, she's the, she's the, she's the intermediary, intermediary between the spiritual world, that is the baby's world, and the earthly world she brings the babies into the world so the world exists or continue existing through the woman and you expect to put your mouth in that place then use that same mouth to come and prophesy the goodness of god use it to preach use it to incur uh, god's blessings on your life you don't do that for you to even take a second to start thinking of perverse things like uh, you want to go and start making love through the anus you want to put your mouth or stick your tongue in in places you are you ought not to it means you have already, you are already thinking of perverse things in your mind god does not deal with perverse people god is not a perverse god do your things the way they are, they are, they are supposed to, to be done. By the time you start thinking of, okay, let me put my tongue there. Let me try and stick my uh, reproductive organ where a woman is supposed to be excreting. Automatically, you have started uh, entertaining the idea of trying to stick it in the same man's excretional uh, uh, organ. Because that is the same thing. What are we talking about? If you are using your mouth to make oral sex, then it means you can as well use your mouth for the same uh, same sex as you. It's the same thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's learn not to be of the world. God gave us a way, a conventional way of enjoying things of life. And once you go beyond it and start imagining perverse things, things that are not supposed... As a Christian person that reads his Bible and you abide by the what will make your mind start to linger around such ideas, first of all. What are you thinking of? Once you still start thinking of the fleshly enjoyment, that is when you start entertaining thoughts that are out of this world. The devil start putting some 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 thoughts to, for you. You're beginning to think of doing things in unnatural ways. What happened to the natural way of enjoying sex? That you're thinking of doing it in other places, in another ways. Before you know, you start saying you want to spice off your marriage. Spice off your marriage and you bring in a third party and have a threesome. You see, that is how the devil enters this thing. He's very cunning. 
He has been doing this thing for so long. He's even smarter than humans. It's only through God's mercies, prayer, and uh, and uh, and uh, worship that is when God shows you the way and helps you fight off these demons. So don't entertain these things by giving them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let God help us and you help yourself by studying the word and stop thinking your mind and entertaining filthy and dirty things. You're a Christian. Act like one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today is going to be a double episode because I also want to talk about something that came to my notice today. Yes, uh, I was with a brother uh, some days back and the brother was telling me when he started attending church, things weren't going easy for him that he manages by all means to put up his smile in the church that the smile don't come from his belly he was going through dark times really dark periods he said for him to even come to church sometimes he has to even trek his house is not close to the church but he treks just to meet up he wanted to give up on god but something in him strengthened him and told him keep on going the lord is your strength can you imagine somebody like that, that didn't even have transport to come to church? And he was coming and didn't tell anybody his problems. He was having his faith and hope and trust in God to do a miracle in his life. And he kept on coming. Then I was at the church today. I want to talk about prophets. There are good prophets that don't mean to, to be bad, but the devil is very cunning. He comes in at the slightest chance he get. You give him a small opening, you give him a chance, he take chances. You give him a cap, he, he gives you a cap, he, he's coming for your head. Now this pastor was like in the church. He was like all the men in the church should stand up. Everybody stood up. And he was like there is a program they want to do in the church that everybody should bring out such amount of money and if you have the money after all the men were standing up he asked all the men that were going to pay for that money to come out what is that saying that means the remaining people that were standing are going to be looked upon by every other person in the church and they will be judged they will be judged as either being stingy or they will be uh, uh, what do they call what's the best word for this they will be segregated. They will be looked upon as, as a menace to the church, as rebellious people to the church. People now don't know what these people go through. You don't even know if they eat. You don't know if they have money or they have children's school fees was paid. And you ask everybody to stand up and you distinguish that the ones that have money should come to this side and the other ones that don't have money should stay in this side. That is robbery with the name of God. You are robbing and scamming people in the name of God. The Bible said, give, you should give, but you should never give under duress. Any giving that is not coming from your heart is robbery. That is robbing in the name of God. That is armed robbery. You are armed robbery. You are armed with the Bible to rob people. Imagine somebody that is just beginning to know God. Let me tell you for an, uh, an example is, before I gave my life to Christ, I used to think, why would I be going to church to go to a place where people pri uh, fly in private jets while their poor members don't even eat? They build universities that their members can't even attend because they don't have money to attend. When well, these churches were built with these people's tithes and, uh, and uh, offerings. So I said to myself, I will not be a party to that. That is oppression. You are feeding on the gullible. That is what the devil does. That was the, the thought I had. That was why I wasn't going to church. And somebody told me that I should belong to somewhere. That every people that have the same belief should have a circle where they have meeting once in a while. Because even the Bible said, when three or two are gathered, my presence is stronger in that place. He said, even the witches and wizards have a covenant where they go to make their meeting. The cultic world have where they make their meeting. Even the native doctors uh, have their own meeting. This. So if you get identified with the church, that was the only thing that made me start going to church. Because you see, what if I had that faith? In, what, I had that, what if I had that, I was still entertaining that thought and I was trying to come close to God and know God. And this thing happened today in the church that they robbed people, daylight robbery, and ask people that have money to come out while standing while the other ones that don't have should still stand. What if I went there today as my first day of giving it a try? What would I think? 
I would have been a lost soul because that would be the last time I would go to church. I would be like, ah, they confirmed my thoughts, my doubts. Yes, I was thinking these people, they are all after the money and I came and that is the first thing they did. They don't even know if I've eaten. They are telling me to stand up and pay such amount of money. Did they give me money to give them? Do they know my account? Do they know where I work? So, uh, this goes out to the men of God. Please, don't work for your for yourself. For your, don't use the name of God for your selfish gains. If you want to preach, preach. If you want to rob, go and pick a gun and go and start robbing people. Don't do it in the name of God. You have, that's blasphemy. You are going straight to hell because you are scaring people that are poor from coming to church. How do you expect people that don't have money to come back tomorrow so that they will be they will be shamed, they will be disgraced that they don't have money? Is that how they do things? Is that how is that what the Bible taught you? If you don't know how to handle the mantle of leadership that God put on you, maybe you called yourself. Go and go into uh, native doctrine or uh, occultic leadership and leave God's work alone. You know? Don't use God's name to lead people to hell. Know where you stand. Don't lead innocent people who are sincere and want to follow God with their might, their power, and their strength. You go and lead them to invest all this into the wrong doctrine and you send them to hell. God is going to punish you if you know what you are doing and you are still doing it. But if you are doing it because you don't know, then I pray and hope that God makes us to know that what we are doing is wrong and shows us the right way to go about leadership in the church. How to hold new people that are about to give their life to Christ or newly give their life to Christ. Let's strengthen them in the, in the spirit, not scare them away with wanting small material uh, material needs from what, what, they have, what, they, what they got or what they don't even have. You're forcing them to give what they don't have. Look at what happened today. Most people were like, they don't even have the money in their body. They, are, they, will, they will make transfers. That is robbery. Desist from that. God is looking at you. Don't use the name of God to rob people. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for this video to go around, for people to be enlightened about God and to be enlightened about fake prophets that scare people away with, with, material, with their material insatiable needs of this world. Uh, share the video to your family, friends, in order for them to, to be informed. You could subscri uh, subscribe to the to the channel and get first hand information when I drop videos like this. Uh, you could like the video for encouragement, drop your comments. Thank you very much for your time. May God bless you all as you navigate your way through life in this quest for heaven. This is a pilgrim progress and we are bound to make success if we use the words of God and let it direct us to uh, fulfill the words of the kingdom of God. Enjoy the rest of your day. Like I always say, Asante Sana. Merci beaucoup. Enjoy the rest of your day.